Hello, teacher. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm fine. I'm happy. <laughs> and you? Yes, I'm fine too. <laughs> Everything is okay. You said you were happy. <laughs> I am I'm happy. I am happy. Sorry, because um, this day I saw more... Uh, uh, I don't know what is the name in English. I think it's uh, Chewy, my 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 little pet. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I. Uh, she was in a. She was in a bed. Uh, this Saturday, this past Saturday, and she was alone. Uh, he, her, uh, her owners give alone in that bed. So. Oh. Yes, so I, I found with my boyfriend that 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 clear pet. So um we decide uh, well we decided to um give uh, I don't know what is what is to explain that but <laughs> we take that that, that, oh, that you, you can say you adopt it. You can say it too. No, in, in fact uh she she always uh, uh it's here uh, for a um, time i think oh so you are taking care you, you decide to take her yes and we pull we post in facebook and in, in, in whatsapp that that little girl okay so you you decided to take care of her some days and then you will look for an owner yes okay and how months is he is uh, she two two or, or three months uh i think and in the bath uh they tell uh, they tell us the surgeon for uh for 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 her for she don't what for uh well uh I don't know what 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 is the name of, of that kind of series when the dogs don't have babies. Oh, you can say it's the real size of that. Mm -hmm. To oh, esterilize uh, her. Okay, the the bed in the bed uh, tell us the, the that series uh, is it, it's well paid for 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 the for 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 she. Oh, that will be for free. They will pay the surgeons. Yes. yes. Oh, okay, okay. So that's good because I I understand that um, they are a little bit expensive sometimes. You have to pay around ninety, eighty dollars. No, it it depends because uh we have three uh pets, and I have three dogs. Um big dogs <laughs> and you pay for 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 her um uh, i don't know 16 16 dollars or 15 dollars it depends uh the the the, the way okay it's a thing but i have listened that they are expensive so that's why <laughs> i i thought about it because i listen about those prices around 80 70 dollars something like that but yeah. well <laughs> okay at least with her that would be for free <laughs> right yes okay good so well, i hope you can find an owner soon to yes. yeah. help her okay good so let's see. Yesterday, I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch the video yesterday, the class. No, no, I, I, I haven't. Okay, so yesterday we continued study with uh, adverb clauses, just to give you an idea about what we studied yesterday. Well, today I sent uh, a practice right about who and whom in the group. Uh, to practice the difference between who and whom, because you remember that was tricky, the first class, that was a little bit complicated. Yes, I who and whom. <laughs> Okay, a lot. <laughs> okay, but yesterday we continue with the clauses, and I tell them, well, to the class, that relative clauses can substitute the subject and also the, the object, right? And they are just a part of a sentence. They are not like the full sentence. So they give more information about the subject or the object that we are talking about. And we have two types. We have a, well, that's what I said before, 
they can be used alone, right? And we have two types, the defining and not defining. When is defining clause, when it's essential, we have to use that, okay? This is used to add essential information about a noun, and we use this without commas. We don't have to put the comma. And which is when it's not essential, right? Information about the noun, and we have to put it between commas. Just to give you an example of this, Okay, let's take the house and the cupcake. Okay, if you read this, Rocio, we live in a house that has a pink roof. That information is essential because if you only say we live in a house, it's like, okay, all of us live in a house, but you're not giving me, right? Information, important information. So it means that you cannot omit. That is, that has a pink roof. So that is a restrictive, or we can call it defining class. And the other side that we have, we ate all cupcakes, which I bake. That part, which I bake, is not important, right? It's extra, but we can omit it because the important part is we ate all the cupcakes. So that is the difference between these two. Okay, the, the clauses. Okay. That was a quick review. Now let's go back to this one. Okay, guys, tell me, before to continue with clauses, I want to try with this. Do you know what is a homophone word? What is it? Homophones. No, I don't know. Do you know it? Okay, so let's try with homophones. Let's see. Okay, a uh, homophone word and you, Rocio, do you know what is it? Is, oh no. Uh, I think is the is the word uh, pronounced the same? I think it's the 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 names is different or something like that. Mm -hmm. You pronounce exactly yes. There are those uh, words that when you pronounce it, they sound like the same, but have different meaning. And most of the time, the only way to identify them is the context. Okay, so let's start with this. Martin, the legwork number. Number seven. Okay, the lucky number. Okay, let's see. That is a clue. Number seven. You have to guess the homophone. Mm, right. Yes, that would be right. It's exactly the same pronunciation, right? And right. Yes, very good. It's not, well, Well, sometimes um, when we are not natives, right? When we uh, read those type of words, we try to give it a different pronunciation. But no, it's the same, right? Right. Yes. Okay, now Rocio, select one of them. One. I don't know. <laughs> what is the word? Yeah. Any idea? Mm, okay. Martin, do you have an idea? Uh, which, I, I'm which? not sure which. <laughs> yes. That would be which. <laughs> yes. Do you know the meaning of a spells? With a spells? Yes. Like uh, a chisels. Uh -huh. Yes. That is it. Exactly. So that would be woman with the spells and shoes. It's a witch, yes. Okay, now Martin, select one. Uh, 11. Okay, let's see number 11. Oof. <laughs> Mm 
No, I don't know. No, Rocio, ideas about what could be the answer. Four. Six. Uh -uh. <laughs> Still. <laughs> yes. Still. Was, yes, was a type of metal and <laughs> they clean <you> know. out. <laughs> Okay, that was a steal. Good. Let's see you. Select the next one. Five. Okay, number five. That place. Uh, I don't know. Uh, something they, they own is... is Something they have, of course. Mm -hmm. To own something is that it's yours. Uh -huh. um, In that place. Mm, it's related with possessives. Mine? No. That would not be mine. Is a place and a possessive. It's a word that we use to describe a place. <laughs> no, I don't know. No? no. Okay, Martin, do you know it? No. No? Sure. Okay, this one. There. Okay. So it's the same pronunciation, there and there. Sometimes we pronounce there, right? The possessive, but it's not. It's there, there. It's the same pronunciation. Okay, and let's see the last one. Martin, select one more. Number two. Number two, okay. Sale. Sale? Yes. <laughs> that, that was sale. Okay, guys. Very good. So, all of them were homophones. Remember, they, we pronounce them, pronounce, pronounce them like the same, right? But they have different meanings and also a different spell. Yes. And that exists in all the languages, not only in English. We also have it in Spanish and in another language too. Okay, so we can go back to the class. Remember, we are studying the relative clauses and I want to practice a little bit with relative clauses. Okay, do not get lost with relative clauses. Remember that they have two parts. In relative clauses, we have like the main clause, and the part that is giving extra information. For example, let me show you. Let's see. Well, that was the previous class that we have examples of it. Okay, we have those type of sentences. Okay, if you remember, we say, I like the person, that is to give the context, the person was nice to me. The third sentence is the clause, the relative clause, that we, we can separate it. You have the main clause, I like the person, that is just like one part of the sentence. Then you have the relative pronoun, that is who, and then you put the relative clause, who was nice to me. So if you remember, the relative clauses are just a part of the sentence. Who was nice to me? It's similar to describe a compound sentence, like in Spanish, compound sentence. Two simple sentences in one sentence. 
that conform one sentence. This is working as a subject. Another example when you find where you can identify subject, this, I hate the dog, the, the dog bites me. So in the relative clause, you say that bite, I hate the dog, that might, that bite. That is the relative clauses. And sometimes they are not only subjects, they could be objects. For example, this is talking about the bike. I like the bike, that is the main clause, and then the relative that my father gave me. So replace the word bike. And that is the object, right, of the um, previous sentence, of the sentences. So in this exercise, guys, we're going to practice with relative clauses according to the let's see some festivals some specific uh, we can say it's celebration festivals in our country also in another countries all some seasons during the year so what we have to do we have to select the a uh, relative clause for each like the main clause with the relative clause. Okay, so let's see, I will give you some minutes to see the options and then we're going to start to answer them. Let's see. Okay, let's focus on the first one. Couples celebrate their marriage. Couples celebrate their marriage. Valentine's okay. Day. Valentine's Day? Do you think that it's Valentine's? Uh, wedding anniversary. Oh, wedding. Uh, wedding. Uh, wedding. Wedding. Wedding or oh, oh. wedding is the the correct pronunciation. That would be wedding. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Let me check. That is wedding. We wedding. Wedding. Wedding anniversary. Yes, it's wedding. Yes. Yeah. So that would be wedding anniversary. Is the time when that is the the relative pronoun when. Couples celebrate their marriage. Okay, now let's see the next one. Couples in many countries honor workers. Labor Day. Is the Labor Day? Hmm. Yes. Yes. Is this one? Labor Day is a day when people in many countries honor workers. Okay. What about next? People remember the day. Uh, remember the bear, where goes through. I'm not sure. Uh, for me, it's Halloween for for the work cost on a, a golf trick and treat. I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's Halloween. Do you know the origin of Halloween? Do you know it? The origin of Halloween? No. Uh, it's about uh, an European. A tradition uh, uh, the, the people uh, use uh, some some kind of lambs or or the pumpkin mm -hmm. to scare uh, the the bad spirits mm -hmm. yes exactly but it's that's why they say to remember the dead because in if I know Rome, that was uh that was celebrated originally in UK, and it's like for us the November second, it's similar to that uh, the real meaning for them. Mm -hmm. But United States adapted right, and they give it like another meaning, and also we try to follow that. We here in El Salvador we don't celebrate it like that. But we we have some decorations in some places or some movies, something like that, right? We give it more just the meaning like something scary. And we try to respect in November 2nd to, to honor, right? Uh, our relatives, right? That pass away. But for them in UK, that was the origin to remember the dead. Hmm? Okay, let's see the next one. 
People have parties with family and friends. New Year's uh, Eve. Uh -huh. Okay, read it, Martin. Read it. New Year's Eve is the night when uh, people had uh, parties with family and friends on 31st uh, of December. Okay, good. Now let's see the next one. People celebrate their mothers. Mother's Day. Uh -huh. Okay, it's Mother's Day. Yes, okay. Does he have helmet or red? Mother's Day is the day when people celebrate their mothers. Hmm. Okay, the next one. Thank you. We give gift. Which one? Birthdays. Mm -hmm. Yes. Read it, please. Birthdays are uh, days when we give uh, gifts. Yes, exactly. Then we have flowers bloom. Summer. No, it's not summer. April. <laughs> mm, April. Yes. Oh, and no. then spring is the time of the year when it's a spring. Yes, that is a spring. It's the time of the year when flowers bloom. Yes. Mm. Now, we have it's cold and snowy. Winter? Yes, that would be winter. The season. Mm -hmm. When it's cold and snowy. Okay. Then they have people honor their children. Children's Day. Mm -hmm. It's, yes. It's, it's a day. Continue. It's, it's a, day. a day when people honor their ch children. Children, yes. Okay. The next one. It's It rains a lot and leaves fall. Fall? It's fall. Okay. Read it, please. Fall is the season when it's raining a lot and lips fall. Okay, good. Then we have many people like to go to the beach. Summer. It's summer. Hmm. Yes, that, that is the answer. But I don't agree <laughs> with that one because it's so <laughs> crowded. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay, next. People give thanks. Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. It's Thanksgiving. Well, the we... Yes. Okay, read it, please. Thanksgiving is the day when people give thanks. Okay, but then it's giving. Just giving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Because we said it like evening, and it's not end, it's just be. Uh -huh. Thanksgiving, yes. Okay, then people express their love to someone. Valentine's Day. That is Valentine's Day. Okay, and let's see in the next one. <laughs> Difficult, right? <laughs> uh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> okay, April Fool's Day. Okay, people sometimes play tricks on friends. Okay, so tell me, which is the relative pronoun that all the sentences have in common? Which one? Which is the relative pronoun? When. When. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you see, all the sentences have the verb to be, use the verb to be. Is the season, is the day, is the, is, is a time, um, are days, when, it's a day, when. Why? Because when we have a, an adverb, 
three specific adverbs, we have to use the verb to be. The verb to be, uh, let's see, that would be before the pronoun. For example, the, the pronoun, the, the adverb, sorry. And they are called adverbial clauses. Okay, so what will be an adverbial clause? Let's see. Okay, Rocio, how much you read? Adverbial clauses. An adverbial, uh, an adverbial time clauses. Clause show when something happened. Yes, they show us when something happened. The, the previous that we had, the, the last classes, they were not talking about the time, right? Or a specific moments. They were talking about people, subjects, objects, about things, about animals, but not a specific moments. But when you want to talk about time, because we can do it too, or sometimes you want to talk about a specific time, we use adverbial clauses. And we use adverbs, okay? Some people call them relative pronouns because they suppose they are part of this category. But remember that sometimes the same word belong to different categories in English. So if you say when, before, and after, they are adverb time. Let's see this three. When, before, and after. When do we use it? Okay, Martin, help me to use before. Before is just when the action in the main clause happened before the action in the entire uh, clause. Before he went home, he had emailed uh, his boss or his proposal. Okay, yeah, so that is before, right? Like. We can say a previous time. It's used when we have, remember that we have two clauses, the main and the, in this case, that would be the adverbial clause. It's used when the action in the main clause happens before, previous time. The action in the time that's the use. Let's see the next one that we have that is after. Okay, Rosine, how about with after? After means that the action in the main clauses clause happens after that occurs in the time clause. We'll talk later after I finish work. So that is then, right? Then the time lapse. So that is like the adverbs before and after, and they have the same meaning in the clauses. They do not change. Okay, and the last, that is when. Martin, tell me to read when. When means uh, that the action uh, in the main clause uh, happens when something uh, else uh, occurs. I'm not sure. When you go to the mail, I'll leave uh, for the office. Okay, that would be something else. Else. It, it's the same, like if you were reading else. The pronunciation, because... Else. Uh -huh. Else. Uh -huh. When something else occurs. Of course. Yes. Okay. okay. Good. So that is when. It means the moment, right? Like the, the, the exercise that we completed with summer, spring, all of these events, giving, Valentine's Day, because they were about in a specific moment. So we use when. So we have some other examples. Let's so let's see. Yes, let's see about this. Okay, Rocio, help me with these two examples. When I left the house, my mom was there. My mom was there. I I don't know. My when, mom was there when I left the house. Yes, I wrote I wrote the the, the same. <laughs> yes. The <laughs> Ah, the next, the next yes, part. sorry. Okay, don't worry. So, what happened with this one, guys? Well, it's the same idea. What do you think? In both? It's the same sentence, right? When I left the house, my mom was there. And my mom was there when I left the house. It's the same? Yes. 
for yeah. both of them. Mm -hmm. It's the same. Yes, it's exactly the same expression. But we can move the positions because you have two clauses in the sentence or in this type of expressions. So what happened if you put the adverb at the beginning? You have to use a comma because you need to make a pause and then continue. Like in Spanish, right? We use commas to improve the pronunciation, the, the emphasize in some uh, sentences. When I left the house, my mom was there. So I have to stop a little bit. But if you put the adverb or the, the this will be the adverbial clause, then like at the end, you don't need to use the comma. My mom was there when I left the house. Why? Because the adverb of time connects the two ideas. So you don't need the comma. So that will be a rule that you have to follow. You can use it as you prefer. Both are correct. But don't forget, if you put the adverb of time at the beginning, put the comma. If you don't use it, if you put it at the end, sorry, like the second sentence, you don't have to use it. So it's not correct if I put a comma here, for example. My mom was there when I left the house. It's not, because it's not necessary. Okay, let's see the second example. Help me, Martin, with this one before. Before I start to work, I check my agenda. Uh, I check my agenda before I start to work. Yes, okay, good. And let's see with after, Rocio. After the teacher gave the instructions, students did the test. Students did the test after the teacher gave the instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So basically two ways to write it and both of them are correct. You'll have to be careful with the comma and the positions. And this guys is what I was explaining before that we have to use the verb to be. It's like uh, mandatory to use it when we have clauses of time or the same um, adverse clauses, adverbial clauses. That is to talk about the time, when, uh, before, and after. So we can know, we cannot omit it. February 14th is. So we should use it. It's the day when people give cards to the oh, to the ones they love. All that part is the relative clause. That is the information that they are adding to. Remember that a clause, an adverbial clause, a relative clause, they give information because they are describing something about the clause, the main clause. In this case, when you say the day when people give cards to the ones they love, they are adding information or describing February 14th. And the same happened with the next one. New Year's Eve is obligated birth to be. Could be singular or could be a plural. It doesn't matter, could be both. Is a night when I have fun with my friends. So this is the clause, the adverbial clause that is describing what to do in New Year's Eve. So that is the idea, how we use it. Okay, let's try with this one. We have to match. Okay, let's see. Just to practice the last part with this. Okay, let's see. Rocio, help me with this. Mother day, Mother's Day is the day. Mother's Day is the day when people give gifts to their mothers. Okay, when people give gifts to their mothers. Okay, good. So, Martin, Christmas is the night. Christmas is the night when people celebrate uh, Jesus' birthday. That will be okay. Third Sunday of June is the day, Rocio. Is the day um 
I don't know, <laughs> when people celebrate Mexican Revolution. Sure. No, I don't know when, when, mm -hmm. when the people celebrate that day. Hmm. What do you think, Martin? Uh, when people celebrate Father's Day. It's Father's Day. Hmm? It's Father's Day. When people celebrate Father's Day. Okay. And we are between two. March 18th and November 20th. What do you celebrate it in March 18th? November 20th, I think is Mexican Revolution. I don't sure, but uh, <laughs> March uh, 18th, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when is Mexican Revolution? Uh, you, November, sure? November uh, 20th. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's in November. November 20th. Yes. So let's go back to this. Yes, November 20th is Mexican Revolution. And the last one, what will be? March 18? March 18 is the day when people celebrate the oil expropriation. Expropriation, yes, exactly. So basically, guys, when you want to describe a date, or a situation is not only with festivals or special days when we celebrate something that could be any other activity or even at work some meetings if remember imagine that you have programmed one meeting and you want to describe what you're going to do on that meeting we can use this type of clauses because that type of clauses give more information about that situation okay and also could be about people could be about and uh, let's see animals could be about one object and so on. okay and what happened to practice guys with the previous okay we have studied two type of clauses relative clauses and this one what was the name At, before, after, and when? Adverbial clauses. Adverbial clauses. Yes, exactly. Adverbial clauses. Mm -hmm. So when we have a relative clauses, we are talking about people, right? So let's see this one. Okay, what we're going to do with this activity? We're going to match the clause that belongs to. Okay, and in this, we're going to mix them. The relative pronouns and the adverbial, uh, the, the address of time. Before, after, and when. So let's see, Rocio, help me to read this, this paragraph. Okay, the sentences below all contain the main clauses and relative clauses. Close. A relative clause comes after the noun to which they add more information. They usually start with a relative pronoun, uh, e.g., which, who, who, whose, when, there. The sentences below have been mixed up. Please match the main clause the, to the relative clause that sweet is best, for example. My favorite food is pizza, which originates from Italy. My favorite food is pizza, which is made from snow. Hmm, okay, so the first one, it makes sense. And it's which, the relative pronoun, that replaces the word pizza, right? Because that's what you're talking about. So in this case, which replace and create the adverb clause like the object of the sentence, which origina originates from it. Okay, what we're going, we're going to do, I will send you this link. Okay, so try to join. 
to this link. Okay, let me tell you how to use this. This is the Jamboard. It's a tool from Google, I think. Yes, it's Google because it's part of Meet, Classroom, all of them. And you have some tools that you can use. With this one, you can create some lines. You can select different type of pens and different colors too. This is the eraser. We can use it like, I use, I remember that we had this type of in, in pen, I think, paint <laughs> that was similar to it. If you don't want to write or you don't want to eliminate and you want to select something, use this, okay? And that's how you can move some pictures. Maybe in a, another activity, you will have to put some pictures. So that's how. This is a sticky note. So you can write and then you save it. And that will be appear in the screen, like a post-it. And also you can eliminate it too. This is to add pictures, to upload pictures from the computer. And this one, it's to create some figures if you need it. And this is to write, okay? The chart with letter T in the middle is to write. So you put it like a text chart and you start writing, whatever. Okay, so in this activity, you're going to select the pen. So if you want to, you can select any color that you like. And what do you have to do? We read the instructions. We have to match, right? The main clause with the relative clause that fits better with the main clause, okay? So you two both can work in the same page. It's not necessary to create the other. So try to answer it together. Okay, I will give you some minutes to complete it. To match, you have to match the, the answers. Yes, okay, I think you finish. It's not missing. No, right, it's not missing it. Okay, so let's see. Rocio, read the sentence that you match. Okay, uh, the first, I I, I didn't understand. Read. I, I read the, the... Yes, I want to read them. Okay. I got I got swimming at seven a.m. 
uh, which means I don't have breakfast until 8.30 a.m. Okay, two more, two more examples. Okay, uh, Robert is a very hardworking boy who always does his uh, homework. Um, the other is we move the other. I can eat the sandwich because it has pineapple pain peanut peanut. I don't know what peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter inside it, which I am allergic to. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So Martin, help me with three examples. Okay. My sister looks like my mom, whose hair curls in the same way. We moved a house in 2014. 20, uh -huh. Oh, well, 2014, house. that will be. <laughs> uh, when I was uh, eight years old. And uh, Jaguars live in the rainforest uh, where it is hot and humid. Okay, yes, very good. And then we had the Egyptians were great architects. Uh, well, some people pronounce architects and others are architects and both are septics. I don't know which one do you prefer, but well, we can say it. And who built many pyramids? I have to play inside a house when the weather is terrible outside. And the flying boy is called Peter Pan, whose home is never. Okay, guys. So in this uh, activity, we have them mixed, right? Who's, which, when, who, when, who, where, which, and whose. So we have some adverb times that they are talking about moments, about the time. That's why they are adverb time. And the others are talking about people or things, right? Or even places. Okay, guys. So that's how we use relative pauses. I think, as I mentioned before, that it's helpful when you want to describe or when you want to give more details about something. Because remember, they are giving extra information about uh, anything that we prefer to talk about. It. And now let's see with this one. If you remember, I mentioned, so let's see, that we have two type of expressions or well, two type of clauses. We have restrictive or defining is the same and not defining or not restrictive. When we have something that is restrictive, it means that the clause cannot be eliminated because it's essential information about the main clause. And when it is not restrictive, we can eliminate it because it's not essential. So in the next exercise, we're going to try to decide if that is restrictive or not restrictive. Let's see the first example we have. My sister who lives in Mel, that will be Melbourne, Melbourne, it's not pronounced the E, Melbourne, came to visit me last month. Okay, do you have any information between comas, framed by comas? Who lives in Bur uh, that's difficult. Who lives in Melbourne? Okay, so if you eliminate that part, that's not important. Okay, so we understand the idea if we eliminate. So that's why it's not restrictive. Because if you say, my sister came to visit me last month, that is the important information. Okay, let's try with the next one. Martin, help me with number two. What do you think? Mm, not restrictive for me. It's not restrictive for you? Sure. I'm not Why? sure. 
Uh, well, uh, in this case, uh, it's best uh, to understand the dog. Uh, it is a it is a warning uh, to to the, to the people you 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 tell this. Uh, uh, I only uh, it's the best uh, to understand the dog. Uh, it's a warning. For me, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't know is uh, a compliment. Uh, I'm not sure uh, the action the dog uh, will will do, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you you don't need uh, the, this this part uh, to understand the the main uh, meaning of the of the, the sentence. Like the warning. Yes. Yes, it's the best to not store your dog. Just that. Hmm? But when happen when dogs know you and they are familiar to you to them? Hmm. Are they playful with us? Yes or no? Mm, maybe. Sometimes, okay, maybe. Okay, but according to the rule, when we use that, the the relative a pronoun that that is restricted. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. That's restricted. Okay, okay. So okay. we cannot eliminate it. Mm -hmm. But it has sense what you say. It's it's a warning, and the it's better do not stroke any dog, right? <laughs> because they get get angry. So yes, it's true. But this is restricted because we cannot. Okay. Let's see, Rocio, what about next one? Number three. Um, for me, it's, it's restrictive because uh, Neil likes to walk in and that uh, help, 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 I know it's, it's girl, <laughs> help her to, to, to keep the fit. So for me, is the, the is the reason why she go to to work. Okay, so it's restrictive. Yes, yeah, it's more information about uh, why she doing that, that that activity. Okay, so that would be restrictive. Okay, because you add more information because if only you say Neil likes to go walking. Mm, okay. But what else? It's like you feel that it's missing something. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Martin, help me with the next one. Fish. Fish which have gills live in the sea. Not restrictive for me. It's not restrictive? Yes, it's not restrictive. Because you have information between comas, which have gills. That is the part that we can eliminate. And you only say fish live in the sea. Mm -hmm. That. And Rocio, help me with the next one. Uh, for me, is rest it's restrictive. Restrictive? Yes. Sure. It's not an extra information that we can eliminate it. You elim eliminated that. The sentence is uh, one part. One part. Uh, we'll discover in America. Uh -huh. If you eliminate, was from Italy. Yes, it's well. It's it's not restrictive because uh -huh. I think you talk about Christopher. Yeah. No, no, what uh, he 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 Let's did. It. Uh -huh. or what he did. Okay. Yes. So that's not restrictive because we can eliminate who discover America and the rest of the sentence makes sense. Yes. Let's see one more. Let's see Martin. Help me with number six. For the camper trip, the children need clothes uh, that are washable uh, restricted. It's restrictive mm -hmm. because they describe the clothes, but that is washable. Yes, we cannot eliminate that part because it's a requirement. 
Okay, Rocio, number seven. For me, it's just restrictive. Is restrictive? Yes. Sure? Um, yes, because to, uh, if you say may not to play with dolls, it's, it's like, it's okay. <laughs> she played with dolls, but. But does it make sense? May yes. not play with dolls? Yes, but uh, um, it's like when you say, for me, it's like when you say, uh, you drink a lot of water. In, I don't huh? know, is, is, is the only information? I don't know if, if you need only that information. Mm, okay, but in that part, it's not restrictive because we can eliminate it because it makes sense. May often plays with dolls. And that it's a simple sentence. So we can eliminate, we can keep her busy, busy, sorry, for hours. So it's extra information, but it's giving more details that can be eliminated. So in this case, it's not restricted. This information, that would be not restricted, non-restricted. Okay, Martin, the next one, number eight. Uh, not restricted. It's not restrictive. Which is the part that is not res non restricted? Uh, the todo became uh, extinct in uh, sixteen eighty one. Okay, and we have a part that can be eliminated, which was a fly and spirit, right? Yes, so it is not restricted. Okay, number nine, was it? restricted. It's restrictive, sure. Yes. Why? Mm -mm. It's not restrictive. You can. It's not restrictive because you can eliminate which, which is use. Okay. If we use most of the time, if we have which, is not restrictive. If we have that, is restrictive. That will be something to follow, okay? So this is not, non-restricted, okay. And the last one, Martin. Uh, restrictive. Restrictive, okay. Because we use that. That. That he hit with hammer, okay. So uh, to help you to follow the rules with restrictive and not restrictive is that if we have that, it's restrictive. If we have which, it's not restrictive. We have some exceptions that depend on the situation, but most of the time that is restrictive and which is not restrictive, okay? Good. So, so with this topic, what do you think? So, so, or good. Because that was the last practice with, with relatives. Tomorrow we continue with another topic. <laughs> okay. Uh huh, Martin, do you want to say something? No, please. No. Okay. Just try to complete on the platform the exercise that we had on the platform that would help you to practice with this, right? And well, remember, in general, relative clauses add more information about people, animals, things, or a specific situation. Okay, guys, so we're going to stop here. I hope to see you tomorrow too. And tomorrow we have a new time. Thanks for joining and I hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, take care. Bye-bye, take care. Bye-bye.